Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel, welcome back. I'm Mariam and today I am testing new makeup. I have a lot of interesting and peculiar products in front of me. Some of them are from brands you may or may not have heard of before, but others are household name brands. Basically, I am gonna be doing a lot of testing. I am gonna be creating this look that you see here on my face. So if you are into new makeup, if you wanna see what's new and what's good, then keep watching. Watching, but remember to subscribe if you aren't already. Notification bell for Wednesdays and Sundays videos. And now let's get into it. Testing new makeup. Three, two, one. One, two, three. Here we come. Alrighty, so I am gonna begin by priming my face. Why? Because I want my makeup to look good today. I actually am determined to bring back makeup stills for IG. I kind of miss them. I miss seeing them. I miss doing them. I feel like not everything has to be a video. And so my goal for today is to actually create a nice, photographable, inspiring makeup look. That's my goal for today. Even though we're testing new makeup and I don't know how that's gonna go, but I am just going to put all of my best skills forward and I'm gonna attempt to do the best job I possibly can because I actually wanna take a picture of this at the end of the day and I wanna post it on the gram. I did a poll the other day and so many people said that they also, like me, miss seeing makeup stills, not videos, on their IG feed. So I am bringing it back, and in order for my makeup to look good, I need to use this. But not to worry, I have lots of new products to test out today. Number one is from this big old PR package from Kosas. This is called the Glow IV Vitamin Infused Skin Enhancer. I've seen this on the gram, actually. I've seen a few people utilizing it in their makeup videos. Basically, this is supposed to be a reflective hint of tint clean, nutrient-rich, glowing type of primer, I guess. So you're supposed to apply this onto hydrated skin using fingers or a damp revealer blender. And here they have more Kosas products. They have the revealer foundation, which I'm not a huge fan of because I am very oily. And to me, these revealer products are better suited for dry skin. I actually do like the concealer, but again, for me and for my oily skin, I prefer Tarte Shape Tape. Also, they included the sponge, which I already washed and I already dampened just so I can apply this Glow IV product. So I have it in two shades here, but it is available in 10 shades. I have shade Illuminate, which is a sheer light medium. And I also have shade Spark, which is sheer light champagne. So what I'm gonna do is use the lighter shade for the high points of my face face, like my cheekbones, bone pump, there we go. And then I'm gonna use the darker shade, the light medium champagne for the rest of my face, here and there. So then I'm gonna just spread that with my fingers. Ooh, this feels rather luminous actually, and rather pigmented, more pigmented than I was expecting. And now let's actually spread that, wow. This is reflective, you guys. This actually is quite glittery. There's tiny glitter particles, but a lot of them. So perhaps not for textured skin, perhaps not for oily skin, perhaps not all over the face like I'm using, but maybe on the high points of the face, this could be cute. I mean, this is literally giving me a metallic nose. I don't know if this is my jam, to be honest. Maybe I apply too much. All right, let's see if maybe I can remove it from some parts where I clearly don't need it. Um, yeah. Also, I'm gonna take a brush. I feel like I'm not as handy with a sponge as some people are. And I'm just gonna use my brush here to spread some of the sparkles, some of the glitter. I'm gonna show you a close-up of what this glitter looks like, and then you tell me what you think. Guys, it is shining. You can especially see it here. It's quite quite sparkly. But anyway, that's uh, the first layer. I am going to layer some things on top of that. The cool thing about this product is that it does not feel sticky, so that's kind of nice. I am thinking, let me go ahead and add a little bit of this Airborean BB cream. I already love Airborean. I already love their BB cream, and so I'm just gonna add it to the areas where I wanna eliminate this shine which is basically everywhere except for the high points. Though I imagine it'll still be seeping through because this is a pretty light coverage BB cream, one of my faves. And you know what, because my skin right now is on the good side, this is actually looking kind of pretty from afar. In my monitor, the skin looks really, really glowy. Up close, I can definitely see the glitter particles, which to me is a bit much. It's like a smidge too much for an all over face base, even for a highlighter, honestly. But with the BB crayon on top, it's better. Okay, I have a new concealer to test out, and it is from the brand Alley Oop. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this brand, 
brand. I'm kind of new to this brand. I actually first tried their On The Go Shaver, which is a really genius product. It camouflages itself as like a moisturizer or like a little spray for your legs while actually being a shaver. So you can discreetly shave on the go. Say you're at a beach and there's a spot you've missed. But anyway, they're kind of known for their like innovative packaging. So this concealer, which some people in my DMs have said reminds them of tampons and I kind of agree. This concealer actually comes with an included sponge tip applicator right here at the top. And I actually have not seen that before. And this is such a simple but genius idea. And I really like that. So you have the doe foot applicator and then you also have the sponge. I mean, not the most sanitary idea, but still kind of a cute idea. All right, so the shades that I have are Standout, Winner, and All Star. So I honestly can't tell which one of them is the lightest, which of them is the deepest. So I'm just gonna reach for All Star, which looks a little yellowy. And let me grab this one here called Standout. I feel like this one might be a little bit lighter in case I want to brighten. Pinch brighter, yes. And I'm just gonna brighten some strategic areas on my face. There's a nice painterly scent to this, which some people may not like, but I do like. So now let me go ahead and use this clever little sponge. Okay, this is cute for like on the go, but not like the best quality sponge. So I probably wouldn't use it. I'm just gonna go ahead and reach for a brush. This big one from Lawless. This concealer is on the thinner side, but is definitely offering some coverage, though not a ton. See the under eye area? Very pretty actually. Color's not bad, even though I'm mixing two together. I mean, it's doing what it needs to do. It's not terrible by no means. Feels very lightweight and it also spreads fairly easily. I think those of you who don't like tart shape tape because you find it to be too heavy or too drying or just too pigmented, I feel like this might be a really nice option. It actually reminds me of the Kosas concealer, but it is a little bit thinner, which is a good thing because it doesn't crease as easily. Not too bad so far. I think I was able to fix the glittery base. Now I'm gonna set my under eye with my Dominique Cosmetics. Again, I wanna use at least some products that are trusty like this one because I want my makeup to look cute today. I feel like my bangs have grown out. They're like at a length that I really like. So I have like a potential of having a good makeup day. All right, so I'm just setting the under eye real quick, setting around the nose. Cute. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reach for this Makeup Forever Ultra HD powder foundation. This did not have a great wear test. I did already review it and it actually had a pretty terrible wear test. It was absolutely not meant for oily AF skin like mine, even though this claims to be for oily AF skin. So I'm gonna try it with an actual base underneath, not as a standalone product, just to see if it works this way, because I really, really, really did love it upon its initial application. It looked so smooth and so super blurring on my pores, on my texture, that I really wanted to love it. It's just the wear test wasn't that great, but everything else looked really good and promising. So I'm gonna apply this all over my face and I'm gonna set my face with this product. And also I'm kinda gonna avoid this area. I'm just setting the perimeter of my face. Also, I'm not using the included sponge. I'm using this big uh, brush from Jones Road that I love. This is a great brush, by the way. If you guys have a giant face like me and are interested in a really fluffy, really reliable, non-shedding, excellent brush for your entire face for powdering or for bronzing, this is it. This is actually a bronzer brush, but I use it for all over the face because it is that big. I feel like that looks so damn good. So I'm really hoping that with this face base, with my reliable, trusty Airborne BB Cream, I am hoping that this will work. Fingers crossed, but I will update you in the comment section. All right, let's do the forehead real quick. Hello, not worried about you because I got banks though. So I'm applying this just to my bare forehead. So this will definitely get oily, but I don't really care because I got bangs though. I don't even care about my brows today because I got bangs though. Moving on. Bare minerals to set the pores. Even though, what pores? Where are the pores? I don't see any pores. Do you guys see any pores? But just to make it extra, I'm gonna do that Wayne Goss trick. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Boom, 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 and boom. Let's move on. I actually do have a brow product that I am gonna test out, and it is from Iconic London. Meet your newest obsession. This right here is a tint and texture brow perfecting gel. I have it in three shades, chestnut brown, chocolate brown, and black brown. I'm gonna go for black brown because my eyebrow hairs are black, and brown just does not look good on them. Teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny little brush, which is cute. And let's see if this is enough. I feel like with my bangs, this might be enough for my brows. Like I don't really need them to be perfect. I just need them to stick to themselves. Wait a minute, this actually might be decent. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I like that. That was really rather pleasant for me. Let me actually see this 
in a close-up mirror. So this feels like a very lightweight product. There's definitely a hint of tint, but it's not overly pigmented, so it's not adding bulk to my brows. It's just making them look a little bit more put together, a little bit more groomed, and I feel like that works for me. Right? Is it me or was that actually good? I might actually try the other shades. Thank you, Iconic London. All right, so I have a whole table here on the side with a bunch of new products, and uh, some of them I am very conflicted about. I guess that is a, a good word to describe it as. I just received a bunch of products from this Chinese brand called Florasis or maybe Florasis. I'm not sure how to say it correctly. In full transparency, this brand reached out to me and my agents to want to work with me and I've never tested their product before, so before I could even commit to working with them, I naturally said that I wanted to try their products first. For some reason, it didn't work out and they never ended up sending me their products. However, I just found a big box from them. Oh, and mind you, this whole thing happened over a year ago and I just went to my P.O. box where I received fan mail and in my P.O. box, I received a giant box from this brand. So they kind of like bypassed my agency and they sent me stuff to my fan mail. So anyway, now I got my hands on this brand's products. I've heard a lot of interesting commentary about this brand. Some people say it's great, other people have other feelings, but what's most interesting about it is the packaging and also the actual inside. Like this looks extremely, extremely, extremely detailed. Some people might call this beautiful, but to me, at first impression, this looks like a print. I mean, it is a print, it is a mold, and although they were going for something very intricate to almost give you like shock value, I'm not really shocked. I guess maybe because I was expecting it. But nonetheless, I'm gonna test this out today and I'm gonna see how it goes. And just so you know, there is no relationship with the brand. This is the first time that I received products from them. Never did I work with them. Never did they actually send me products before. This is my first initial try. They sent me a lot of stuff, you guys. So I'm gonna show you everything that I've got here. I've got a another makeup palette. Looks like some lipsticks and a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm gonna open up first. And this, I'm not even sure what this is. I think this is like a jewelry box. And again, my impression of this is, yes, it is beautiful at first glance, but it also has this scent that I associate with like some products from Amazon that arrive from China. You know, there's always this like scent that doesn't feel quite luxe. And I actually don't know if this brand is expensive or not. I didn't really do much research, I'll be honest with you. So we've got a mirror, very lightweight, very cheapy quality to me. Okay, this is a what? Gorgeous peach blossom powder. There's like some instructions on the top of this, but they're not in English, so... Oh, we've got a powder and we've got a puff. The puff does feel quite luxy and velvety. This packaging is very, very interesting. So you twist it, then you open it. It's definitely innovative. Okay, Swatch Model came to the rescue. He helped me open up all of these packages. And now I actually am a little bit impressed. Take a look at this. So this is a lipstick. Of course, I'll show you a close up. And the inside of this lipstick is very, very intricate. It looks really beautiful, actually. This is pretty insane. I almost feel like it's like telling the story of a particular Chinese dynasty. I mean, you can't help but be impressed by this. This packaging definitely does feel heavier. It does feel a little bit more luxe than the mirror that I first opened. Also, we have a beauty sponge here, which is just like a generic type of beauty sponge. But even the paper packaging is kind of thought through, you know? Last but not least, we have another palette here. Let me remove the plastic packaging. I mean, this is really, really pretty. And again, we have the intricate molds with all types of dragons and all these mythological creatures and peacocks. This is quite something. This, I believe, is a face palette. We have a highlighter, we have a lighter contour powder, a darker contour powder, and a blush. Flowery makeup relief palette. That's what it says. I am going to use this blush. I'm going to use my old Pixie X Mariam strobe and sculpt brush. I'm going to dip into this Blush. Okay, good thing it's not really getting ruined too quickly. And now let's test it. Hmm, quality's not bad. Nothing I have not seen before. Pretty pigmented for a blush, but not too pigmented that I can't blend it out. Feels pretty soft, pretty powdery, but natural. I like the color. All right, let's do the other side. 
Not bad at all. All right, so now I wanna test out this, I guess, lighter, creamy matte highlighter. I'm gonna use the same brush, but just like the opposite side of the brush. I'm gonna see if maybe I can use this to highlight the top of the cheekbones, the chin. Interesting. And now for the highlighter highlighter. Again, I'm just gonna go in with the same brush. Nope, I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna actually pick up a highlighter brush, dip into this. Oh my God, this is really pretty. Really, really dainty. And the color is so pretty. It's a champagne with just like the tiniest hint of pink. Okay, I actually might like this palette. All I have left to do is to try the contour or the bronzer shade, which is here on the bottom. I'm gonna dip into that lightly. It's pretty decent. The shade is actually a really good mix between a contour and a bronzer. So it's neither cool nor warm. It's a uh, a really good neutral shade. So it's perfect for creating shadow. And also the pigmentation is just right for me, for my preference. This palette is kind of a hit for me, but that doesn't mean that this whole entire brand is a hit. I would have liked to have tried the Peach Blossom setting powder, but I already have setting powder on. So I'm gonna save this for another video. For now, I am going to reach for this eyeshadow palette, I guess. And of course, I'm gonna show you a close up of what this looks like, cause this needs to be appreciated. Though, like I said, it still doesn't quite feel luxy to me. Maybe it's because this is paper and this is just a magnet. Oh, I also have a, looks like a lip balm, moisturizing ginseng lip mask. Let's try it. This is very, very cute. This actually does feel nice and smells really nice. I'm gonna put this on my nightstand. All right, so I'm gonna apply my Jarred Cosmetics white base underneath. I'm gonna take just a little bit. I'm gonna apply that to my lids. I feel like my attempt at looking good and creating a decent makeup look is actually so far working out. The face base looks really, really nice. I really love my blush and highlighter and the subtle contour. So now I'm a little bit nervous. Will I mess this up? Let's go ahead and go for it. I'm gonna reach for a really small brush. This one from Sigma Precision Firm Blender, number E42. I'm gonna dip into this shade here. I'm just gonna swirl it in between the detail. I'm gonna see how this applies. I'm gonna add this to my crease, like directly to the actual fold, which is right here. I feel like that's working out. So far, so good. The shade is quite nice too. All right, so now I'm gonna start bringing this crease a little bit higher. I really just wanted to define, not my eye socket, but my actual eye shape, like my actual fold. I'm gonna start winging that out towards the tail end and then kind of bring it back. I'm just making that a bit more of a shape rather than a line. I will say there is a lot of dust, I guess because the eyeshadow molds are so intricate, you can't help but scratch the surface and kick up a lot of dust from the eyeshadow. That tells me that the beauty of this palette will probably fade very quickly and the palette itself will get dusty fairly quickly as well. And I'm still essentially dipping in that same spot. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit more and add that to my lower lash line like that and like that not bad okay now i think i want to go for an even smaller brush maybe this one right here this is a og makeup geek pencil brush i'm gonna dip into a darker shadow this brown one here it feels like a cream is it i'm not sure i'm going to emphasize this outer corner quite a bit of fallout with that shade but good thing it's not sticking. Too much fallout for a not super pigmented shadow. I feel like I can potentially ruin my makeup, so I'm gonna stop with that one. I'm gonna go back to the other one and just uh, blend out that edge like that. But now I have to repeat this on the other side. Okay, I'm gonna go in extra, extra carefully. And like that, okay, I feel like that's working. And blend, hmm, kind of sultry. All right, what I really wanna test out is this shade here, which looks like a shimmery teal, kind of like the color of the packaging here. I think I'm gonna pick that up on a flat brush first, and then I'm gonna see if I can maybe use my finger. I'm gonna use the Sculpt number 20 brush. I'm gonna pick up some of this pigment, picks up rather easily. And this looks like a duo tone, mm, but I can't say that it applies easily. And there's fallout. Okay, so so far, as you can tell, I'm not that impressed by the quality of the eyeshadow palette. Yes, it is pretty to look at. However, it does not look luxurious, but also the performance of the eyeshadows is just par. It's okay, but there is a lot of fallout with every single shade practically, and it's just not giving me the kind of payback that I was expecting. 
as pretty as the palette is to look at, this is kind of just barely there for me. Sure, you can pile that on, but every time you pile anything on, there's just a lot of fallout from the eyeshadow. So the finger's not really grabbing it, the brush is not really grabbing it. So sadly, I'm disappointed with this one. I'm gonna show you a close up once more. It's not really that impressive, is it? There is enough fallout underneath here. I don't know if you guys can see that. All right, of course I'll make them match. So I am gonna apply that to my other eye. Just thought this would be punchier. It's such a pretty color. I wanted it to really pack a punch. Meh, it's okay. Kind of barely there for me. I need a really big brush to whisk this off. I'm gonna try one more shade, slight highlighter one, just for my inner corners. Oh no, girl. I don't think so. This is not giving it to me. It is not. But I really like the face palette. All right, so I'm gonna leave the eyeshadow alone for now. I'm gonna reach for a couple of new products from Wonder Skin. I believe I also got their products in my uh, fan mail. But basically, they just sent me some new long wear eyeliners. It's supposed to be an ultra creamy formula that lasts all day. Waterproof, smudge proof, and lightweight. Cool, thank you. There are six shades. There's also a nice makeup bag here. We have oyster blue, olive, licorice, icing, brown sugar. I'm assuming that licorice is black. So I'm gonna go for the black. Ah, okay. So this is a pencil liner, not a liquid. For some reason I was assuming that this was a liquid liner. Yeah, I'm gonna attempt to make this a little bit more interesting. Oh, this pencil liner is really, really easy to use. It is very pigmented, very gel-like consistency, super creamy. You're barely touching the skin, so there's no dragging. Pigment is definitely there. I'm gonna do a little inner corner jammy like that and then connect. This is a unique color. It's a very cool shaded black. I don't mind that. I'm gonna take a um, tiny little brush. This one is from Huda Beauty and I'm gonna perfect my liner here. And also kind of smudge it into the inner corner like that and then into the lash line. And then what I like to do with pencil liners sometimes is I really like to make it soft. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So just line and then kind of perfect the line Soften the wing a bit. I like to keep the top very, very straight, and then I like to soften the bottom, and then I'm gonna line the inner corner, and then perfect it with my little brush. Look at that. Cute, 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 cute. I think I like this. Just a little bit of darkness here that I'm not liking, and it is from the eyeshadow fallout. So I'm gonna see if I can try to fix it with this powder. I'm gonna dip the puff. I'm gonna add it right to that little dark spot, right there, just to let it sit there. Maybe also right there too. And I'll whisk it off in a sec. Next up, I've got some lip liners also from Iconic London. They also sent a lip balm, but I'm strictly interested in the lip liners because I am gonna test out that Florisys nude lipstick. So I'm looking for a brown or a nude type of lip liner. This looks like it is it. Fuller Pout in the shade TTYN. I'm gonna remove the lip balm and the lip liner that I originally had on. And I'm gonna try the Sculpting Lip Liner. This looks like a medium type of brown, like a tan brown. Okay, I'm gonna feather that in a bit and then I'm gonna use the other side to blend it out. Cute. All right, so now that I have the base, I'm gonna go for this very intricate lipstick in the shade Terracotta Romance. Hmm, this actually looks like a really good match for the lip liner if you're going for that brown nude ombre look. The lipstick itself is very, very lightweight. I can see that it's a matte finish and does feel quite comfortable on the lips. Not hating it. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add mascara, but first I'm gonna whisk off that white powder and I'm gonna re-add a little bit of highlighter to underneath my eye. For my mascara today, I actually don't have anything new. So I'm just gonna go for whatever's here. I'm gonna use my Maybelline Sky High. Yep, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of mascara I'm gonna brush it along my lashes, but pushing my lashes outwards to give me like a flared lower lash look like that. And that is my final look. So overall, I think I did a pretty good job of putting this look together. Um, I definitely was inspired by some of these new products. And I gotta say, I actually think I like this look outside of the punchiness and the inspo factor that I was going for. I think this is something that is very, very wearable. Although inside I really was going for more. Sadly, I was not able to get that drama with the products that I had here in front of me, but overall 
I still really like this look. So now to go over everything, there are definitely some products that I am impressed with and there are others that I am not so impressed with. Namely, I thought this palette, although looked beautiful and definitely different from what we've seen before, the pigmentation just was not there. The colors were just not showing up. I was really expecting more from this shimmery blue that I have on my lids and although you can see it, it's not as dramatic as I was hoping it would be. So I guess I'm a little bit underwhelmed with this particular product, but that's not to say that I didn't enjoy the face palette from Floresis. I thought this was actually really, really nice and I'm gonna continue reaching for it and using it. I also liked the lipstick. I thought that it was a pretty color and all of this detail, does make it feel a little bit more special. That I can't deny. Everything else from that brand, I'm gonna have to give a couple more tries and see how it wears, see how it feels. But those are just my initial first impression thoughts. Next, the skin. This Kosas Glow IV Vitamin Infused Skin Enhancer was a bit too much for me. It was just a little bit too glittery to be used as a first layer or like a base for your foundation. To me, it was just way too much, way too glittery, too many glitter particles, and they felt more more than sparkles. They were actually more in the glitter category than in the sparkle category. Although I was able to make it work with other products on top of it, I wouldn't necessarily use this again. It's just not my cup of tea. To me, it's too much. Love, love, love my Herborium BB Cream. Saved the day, in my opinion. Still not sure how this Makeup Forever HD skin will wear on top of all of those products that I put underneath it, but I definitely know this is not a one and done for oily AF skin like mine. Pleasantly surprised with the iconic London products. Really liked the brow gel tint and also the lip liner. Really, really impressed with the Wonder Skin liner. Super easy to use, beautiful, pigmented, unique color or like a unique take on black. And yeah, I like it. So those are kind of my thoughts about everything that I've tried today. I definitely like my makeup. I will definitely be taking a picture to show you a close up and um, maybe I'll add on a little something extra just to make it a little bit more inspirational. So with that, I am going to end this video. I'm gonna zoom on out, invite you to check out more of my videos over here, and I'm gonna say farewell. Peace out, you guys. I'm out, and I love you. Mwah. Deuces. <laughs>